this lady just barge in my room and I'm laying there naked. Okay. You're going into my space like you my mother. You're not oh, my mother. Me, you I, keep going into you, my okay. room like you my mother. You I should pay. You should pay too okay. much. I'm not the crazy one in this situation. What she just said is that outright life. Plaintiff Pamela James claims the defendant clogged her driveway with endless visitors, damaged her property, and didn't pay her rent. She's suing for $1,350. Defendant Lavanya Felizma claims the plaintiff made her life miserable with endless complaints. She's countersuing for $4,925 for emotional distress and breach of contract. The testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. yes. Thank you. The Honorable Judge Jerry Springer now presiding. Good morning, Judge. Morning, Najee. How are you? I'm doing well, Judge. Thank Good. You. This is case number 121 on the docket, James versus Thelisma. OK. We have the plaintiff, Pamela James. Yes. Good morning. Welcome. And you are suing the defendant, Lavanya Thelisma? Yes. And Lavanya, she is suing you for $1,350 for two months unpaid rent and a broken vase. And you are countersuing the plaintiff for $4,925 for emotional distress and breach of contract. Yes. Okay, so let's start with you, Pamela. What is your case? I am here, of course, to uh, sue the defendant for um, two and a half months worth of unpaid rent. Yeah. In June, it was approximately, I believe, June 15th, 2019, uh, I rented a room to her in my home. Yes. This is to her, and at the time, uh, she had a one-year-old son. Yes. I would say, basically, we had a cordial relationship yeah. for a while. She was in my home for about a year and four months. Oh, okay. Um, at some point, we just really not began to see things eye to eye. Okay. I did give her an, a written agreement when she came into my home. Mm -hmm. We went over some things, it was you know, very basic. However, I did have a separate conversation with her about company. There are other people that live in my home and um, it's a shared environment. Company would be an issue if it's on a frequent basis. I very much thought that you know, we you know, had a meeting of the minds and everything was okay. I would say a week to two weeks in, I'm in my kitchen. There is a bathroom that is adjacent to the kitchen a man walks out of the bathroom. I immediately call out to her, address the situation, because that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. I don't want to be in my kitchen, and a man comes out the bathroom. So I address the company issue with her again. However, she has a son, and um, I did allow for his father to visit him. Never said a word. I was you know, absolutely fine yeah. with that. I kind of understand you have a child. I, I sign up for that. She's talking about the guy that came out the bathroom. I moved in that day, and I had my son's father help me move in, okay? She got mad because she seen my son's father. We're on a, on a contract. She said, family members is allowed. That's my son's father. What's the problem? He's a family member. This is blood right here. I think because I kind of gave her like an inch in that area that it became a yard because people were visiting all the time. It was quite frequent. Um, it wasn't until the pandemic that, you know, I'm literally looking out my window. We're in the midst of the pandemic. We're under quarantine. I see people leaving my home. At that point, again, I addressed company. I'm like, we're under quarantine. You know, it's not just me. It's other people. It's literally a health crisis. This can't happen. Were people coming in wearing a mask? Absolutely I mean, did you not. have a rule in the place? No, I did not. Um, uh, and people were not coming in wearing masks at okay. all. So I addressed the issue at that time. And this is like, not that long ago. Um, it was probably around that time where things began to really change. Because other than that, we never had any friction between the two of us. Anybody that comes in the house, Judge, I always text her and let her know who's coming to the house. I don't have to do that because I pay rent. That's my privacy. This is, this is private, OK? My I don't have to do that for her, OK? But I do that because it's her house. Okay, and I, I, I think it's, you know, it's, it's, it's good for me to let her know who's coming in her house, because that's the respect I give to her. She got pulled over one evening, and um, this, uh, I, I don't know, something with her vehicle registration, I believe. What's that she could not you, drive her car. So her family business. was um, helping her out at this time because she couldn't drive the car, and they were picking her up, like in the morning, to take her to work, her and her son. And they were, um, you know, leaving her uh, uh, 
dropping her off um, in the late afternoon when she finished work. I had no problem with that. However, right. the, using the driveway became excessive because then somebody would come to pick her up in the afternoon, they're in the driveway. Um, somebody come in the evening, they're in the driveway. I'm not gonna take my son out on the street, it's busy. What is the okay. problem? And it's not like that I'm staying parked in a driveway. I'm literally staying in the driveway for 3.5 seconds. She had a friend one day sitting in the driveway. Day. I want to leave my house. I can't leave my house because your friend is picking you up. I, I brought it to her attention. And so the friend drove off of the driveway onto my neighbor's driveway. And I had to say something because it's my neighbor and we have Not a certain amount of respect. She literally pulled out of my driveway, drove around in front of his house, pulled into his driveway. I live in an area where there's a lot of parking. It's really not an issue wow. at, at, at all. I mean, the streets are almost quite empty most of the time, but That's there's never, people don't have parking issues. So I'm like, can you just use the curb? It's my home, I kind of get to, you know, ask that question. Yeah. A family member picked me up in the driveway. Mind you, we just got in the car and we pulled out. So she didn't even have to wait that long. We literally pulled right out. So as we're coming out the driveway, she sticks her head out the window and say, I keep telling you, you don't pull in the driveway. You're not gonna keep pulling. And my family member, he looked at me. He said, do you know that lady? I said, I don't know her. That's embarrassing. When did this finally come to and that you wanted her out? There was an evening where someone picked her up and the person was in my driveway. It was like late at night, kind of late. Um, I couldn't get in the driveway and I, you know, waiting for them to pull out and I said, this cannot happen again. What month was this? This was July. Okay, what about the driveway situation? All lies, cause she's crazy at the end of the day. When I didn't have my car at the end of May, I had people coming to pick me up. Sure. Now, my rides come in a driveway. They come, they pick me up. I have my son, two-year-old son, okay? The street we live on, can I show you the picture? Yes, please. The street we live on, it's not a lot of parking all the time. She know it's a busy street, and there is never no parking on that street. That's the most active street in the town. She knows that. She know why I pull in the driveway, because I have a son. I need to get his car seat out, groceries, yeah. laundry, whatever I have, okay? Then I have another picture of the driveway. Judge, I work 40 hours a week, so I'm coming in and out every day, okay? So I'm not staying in the driveway for a long okay. time to give her enough time for her to act crazy, what she does. And the situation she talking about when they pulled out in the driveway, I had a family member that pulled out in the driveway late night because I didn't want to stay in the house. She stresses me out, okay? Mentally, emotionally, it's stressful. She's blowing up my phone, Judge. Blowing up my phone, blowing up my phone, blowing up my phone. I couldn't answer it because I'm in a car with a family member. I'm not going to answer it so you can black out and act crazy like you do, which she does. She, she has a, a tendency of coming out blacking out. That's Sir, what she does. you right. must let me She blacks to out, this. okay? So I didn't answer the phone. So when I had a chance to answer the phone after I stepped out of the car of my family member, Oh, you're not allowed. I keep telling you, stop pulling in my driveway. I told you. I said, Pam, we pulled, he pulled in the driveway because I had to take my son in the car. I said, what's the problem? And it was raining that night, and it was dark, and the street was busy that night. So I told her, no, and it was no parking on that side. No parking for my family member to even pull up on the side in front of the house to park. On the contract, she didn't say it was going to be a problem, because when I moved in, I figured, OK, this street is busy. I don't like it. But it's a driveway here, it's safe for my son to get in and out the car. That's what I'm worried about. She don't have a kid because she don't understand. Sir, when she moved into my home, it was not until that incident with her car, she never used my driveway. I don't know what, where this is coming from, and I'm not the crazy one in this situation. What she just said is that out right lie. He just had us raise our hands. Remember, we are under oath. You better she, remember we're under oath. She never you're used lying. the driveway. She never used the driveway until I get she got pulled and everything over. out of the driveway. What are you but talking I, about? That might have been maybe here and you there, only but she was not unloading and I loading her, car. her child. Car. She, she never Wait. used it. Hang on, hang on. I mean, it wouldn't have taken me up until that point to say something. She it's never used business. the driveway. It's my home. Everything is my business in no, my home. No, it's not. My and that's privacy what she is none of your business. That's why you keep that crossing you rent lines. Is that a right. room in my home? That's why you cross right. lines. You right. rent okay. a room Judge in my home. There's also the issue of the Broken base. Just tell me about that. Now, it. so it was last year, January, OK? I called her, not even called her. I texted her. I said, you know what, Pam, my son broke a vase. 
So she called me. She's like, oh, Lavonia, you know, just, you know, be careful. Watch Johan. It's okay. I have three more in my garage, the same one. That's what she said. Don't worry about it. Okay? Now she want to file this case against me. Now she putting a boss in a situation. That's a lie. We're under oath, and you know you said it. Okay? So that's a lie. I don't even know why she put that in here. Okay. She's a liar. But that's mm -hmm. for $50. $50. Yes, that's yes. right. And okay. I told her that I was going to pay for it. And she told me, don't worry about it. Yeah. I didn't have to. Okay. All right. You're a liar. Crazy. You, and okay. you're crazy and a so, liar. So the counter suit you're saying is emotional distress and breach of contract. What is the breach of contract? This lady just violates my privacy. She thinks she could do whatever she want to do, okay? I don't know what landlord think they can walk in people's spaces when they pay rent just doing anything. Like, she, she acts like she was my mother, okay? So she walked, it was one time she walked in my room. She heard the AC, okay? She didn't think I was in my room laying naked in my room, and she just walked in. I said, oh, I'm sorry, I heard the AC. That's none of your business. The AC's in my room, it's on, I'm in here. Next time you come in the room, just call me. Don't just barge yeah. in my room and wake me out my sleep and I'm laying there naked because you heard the AC on. That's one situation. Then another situation, when she walked in the room, right? You know what you did. She walked in my room, okay, and turned off the AC after she texted me. She said, Livonia, um, your AC's on, it's an impact on my bill. I said, okay, I'm on my way. I'm coming down to turn it off. She already had texted me back and said she already turned it off. We need I the text. Never, I so never the gave text? her, I never gave her that permission to go into my room, okay? And I have the text messages that says that. What are you talking about? You came into my room without even telling me. Before I could give her the okay to come into my room, she already entered. She already entered the room. That's yeah. two times you going into my space like you're my mother. You're not my oh, mother. Me, you I, keep going into you, my okay. room like you're my mother. You I should pay it. You should pay the two okay. months. Really, why yeah. would you go into her oh, room? Oh, um, I went into There's the no room. There's no reason why I, you I should go into her room. I literally okay. thought, because this happened once, I thought that she was not there. It was on a day and a time okay. that I remember that Call she me. normally wouldn't be there. I would never burst into someone's room. And I, I literally burst in because I, I not only heard it, but I can feel the AC. I, I, I'm the one that pays the bill. That's the only thing that was on my mind. So what? And you in no way, that. shape, or form on, did on. I try to, you know, yeah. impose on her privacy. I, I literally was just trying to turn the AC up. I genuinely thought she was not there. I believe it was on a day and at a time when she normally was not there. And okay. I thought she left it running all day because she can't say I've done this like four and five times. I don't know, you know what she does. Like you okay, said. Okay, but, whoa, whoa, okay. Then okay. you always have right. the choice to leave yeah. if when you're, we're not happy somewhere. Okay. The door you came in is the one you go through. All right. If I told you I'm coming right back yeah. now to turn it off, why did you go in there? You keep okay. doing that. That's, this is a consistent I, not, thing that happened. So it. now, Your Honor, okay, now I'm thinking like she does this when I'm not home. What about the police being called? She called the cops on me, okay, one day. I was minding my business. I don't know why she called the cops on me, okay? I was packing, this is what happened. I was packing my things and putting it in the car, cleaning out my room. She seen me put my things in the car, pulled up in the driveway and said, you're gonna get out, you're gonna get out today, 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 you're gonna get out. I said, I turned around, I said, who are you talking to? She said, I'm talking to you, I'm gonna get the cops now, I'm gonna get the cops. Sped, this, this, is, this is how she is, sped out the driveway, Okay, and then went to drive to the police department. Now, when the officer came to the house, he knocked on the door and asked me, did I call the cops? No, I did not call the cops. So I guess she met the officer outside, and she let the officer in, and he came knocking on my door. So as he comes in and he knocks on my door, I open the door, he said, what's the situation? I told him, I don't know why she called the cops. I'm just moving things out the room. I don't, I don't talk to this Is lady. Is this when you were leaving the place? No, I was just oh, cleaning, I just see. getting okay. stuff out the room, putting it in my car, you know, getting stuff together because now I got to rush and leave the house because of this stuff that's going on. She's forcing me to leave, okay? So when the officer came, he's sitting in front of the door trying to talk to me to get my side, and she keeps coming in between me and the officer saying, you need to just pay me my rent, pay me my rent you ugly big black ghetto bitch those are her words right. okay the officers they witnessed that it okay. was so crazy your honor the officer had to walk her out of her own house that was my reaction my emotional distress to having this person in my home that did not just happen this was probably about a month of her living in my home not paying rent i feel as though i'm living in a hostile environment 
There's nothing I can do about it. I filed for eviction, but I'm still forced. I'm living with a human being in my home in a hostile situation because okay. we're not on a friendly on friendly terms in my own home and that was my it literally I was at my wits end. Okay. That was my reaction. So All right, here's what I really see. Felt. It was clear that certainly by these last two months, no one was happy with this situation. Crying. Okay. She okay. Had me crying. okay. She I'm not asking for a response. Hang on. The judge I'm is not asking for a response. response. So going through all of this what I see first, I'm going to give you the $50 cert for the breaking of the bars, and that you and the, even agreed to doing it. Right. So the last two months, you're suing for the rent for the last two months. And yes. I can understand you would want rent paid. The lease or the agreement, which originally you submitted to her to sign, the law is pretty clear is when there's a dispute on a contract or on a lease, if it's a close case, the tendency is to give a little bit of space to the one who didn't write the lease, the theory being yes. that no one is going to submit the lease for signature if it's against their own interest. And you were very specific on a whole bunch of items, none of which I think are outrageous. But knowing that, nowhere in the lease is there this whole driveway issue. Right. So I could understand, you know, it is your home. You didn't want anyone in the driveway or parking there. But then that should have been in the lease, and it wasn't. You didn't allow a use of the driveway, and you told her to get out. So that very last month, I'm going to consider it constructive eviction, that it was an impossible situation, so I'm not going to make you pay for that last month. But for one of those months, you are entitled to the rent, okay. because I could understand a landlord that doesn't get rent for two months is going to lose his or her temper and get angry. So your suit was for two months' rent and the $50 for the broken yes. vase, vase. <laughs> I'm going to give you one month's okay. rent, not make her pay two, just one month's rent and the $50. On the countersuit, I'm dismissing that because I've given you the arguments for why I think it's fair that you not have to pay the two months' rent. She did violate the lease by entering your room on what we know of two well, occasions, right. one or two occasions. but. That's not a $4,000 lawsuit. She was wrong. It is technically a violation, but I'm not going to give someone $4,000 because she... It's you know, not even that. It's okay. just the emotional distress. I know, but so I'm dismissing the countersuit. I'm only going to charge you the one month's rent, and so I fine for the plaintiff in the sum of $700. Hang on, man. She's just a crazy old lady, just crazy. I believe I was living with an opportunist. Um, she's a person who took advantage of me and my home. I am absolutely not crazy. Do not rent from this lady because she will give you a hard time and she will violate your personal space. I put up with a lot from her. I think it's because I didn't put up with more. I'm not mad, I'm out the house, I got my own place, I'm good, like, that's it. Hey YouTube, thanks for watching. For more Judge Jerry, click here. For more Jerry Springer, click here.